Hello, in this video, we are going to see how to add a kubectl user with a token. The prerequisite for this topic is some fundamental understanding of kubeadium and the use of JSON path with kubectl. So when a cluster is bootstrapped with kubeadium, it creates TLS keys and certificates. We should already be, already be knowing that. And whenever we issue commands using kubectl, let's say for example, we are gonna issue some command with kubectl like this. Kubectl is actually referring to some information from a file called as kubeconfig and then performing some actions on the cluster as a specific user. This configuration file is usually stored at the home directory and there is a hidden directory called as .cube under which you will see the file config. So this is nothing but cube config. So this file is going to have all the details such as the user details, the context details and so on. If at all you wanted to kind of scroll it slowly, we can use the less command and see what it has got. It will have the cluster information, the cluster certificate, the CA the certificate, the cluster's endpoint, name of the cluster, and it has also got contexts. Contexts is nothing but the combination of user and cluster. And you'd also see where the current context is. This is nothing but the name of the context. And you also see the user section. So the user section is again gonna have the client certificate and client key for the user. So this is a typical cube config, but in this case, we are only having one cluster. If you have like more clusters and if you wanted to manage more than one cluster, your cube config file will have information about those many clusters that you'd like to manage, those many users that you have, that you, that you are scoped with. And depending on the users and clusters, you may also have contexts. Contexts is nothing but a user cluster pair, user on a particular cluster. So this is what you would see. You can also see the cube config file using the handy cube cuttle command, which is cube cuttle config view. So this command can also be used to look at the current user, the current, the current context and, and the clusters. But in this case, you're not gonna view all the details. The certificate details are gonna be omitted to keep it simple, to keep it secure. But when you look at the actual file, you'd have seen all the data in base 64 encoded form. As of now in this cluster, if you see, there is only one user. So this is the users section. And in this section, you only have one user. The name of the user is Kubernetes-admin. And this user is using TLS keys and certificates for authentication. All right, so now let's say you wanted to kind of add a new user to kubectl. So you have kubernetes-admin as a user already and you wanted to add one more user. And when you add it, you also need to specify the authentication for it. So the kubernetes-admin user is actually using client certificate data and client key, TLS certificate and key combination for authentication but we can also add users which follow or which authenticate using tokens instead of certificates and keys. We can also use tokens for authentication. So we first need to create a token before we create the user, right? Using kubectl, there is an easier way of doing this, easier way of creating a token. How would we do it? We could create something called as a service account. So let's first go ahead and create a service account. So I'm just gonna name it as a hyphen admin 2.yaml. This is just a file name. And inside this file, I'm going to put the configuration like this API version is v1 and kind is going to be service account. So kind is given and after that we give the metadata. The metadata, we put the name of it the name uh, can be admin2 and that's it. 
So this configuration is going to be simple. And now I'm going to create the service account. Let's go ahead and create the service account. The service account is created. So let me see if this exists. Yes, we have got the admin to service account. So let's see what we have got inside the service account. So we can use get sa admin to hyphen yaml to view all the configuration inside this live object. So we, got, we have got something called as a secret. A secret gets cre created, a secret gets generated when we create a service account. And now let's go one step further and see what this secret has got. So get secret, the name of the secret, copy it and uh, paste it. So this is the name of the secret. And if I have to give output YAML, I'd get more details about the secret, like the token information in base64 encoded form. So creating a service account has created a secret for us, which has a token inside. And we need a token. As we said earlier, we need a way of authenticating the new user with the API server, with the Kubernetes API server. And, and token is one such method. The existing user Kubernetes admin has used a different way of authentication, the TLS certificate and key, but for the new user, we are gonna choose the token. We are going, that's why we have created the token using a service account. Now the token is there, the token is ready for us. We need to use this token now inside the cube config file. How would we do it? So we have to get this token from the secret. For this, we can use a handy filter provided by kubectl called as JSON path. So instead of using output YAML, I'm gonna use something called as JSON path which is an effective tool for filtering data from Kubernetes output, from the, from the kubectl output. So JSON path is equal to, I'm going to say what I have to filter. I, I'd like to filter just the token. So I'm going to say dot data dot token, which would get just the token for me. I've got the token, so just the token. And if I have to decode it, this is in, base64 encoded form and if i have to decode it i have to use uh, let me just clear it there is too much of data okay so if i have to decode it i'll have to say i'll have to put the pipe symbol and then say base64 hyphen decode so we would now get the decoded text so the, de the decoded text is also ready actually we need to put this inside a file so copying and pasting might not be an effective way of doing it so that's why we're gonna put all this in a variable. So I can say something like this. I can uh, put this inside a variable called as token. I'm just going to put all this information, put this data inside a variable called as token. I just call the previous command and uh, I'll go to the beginning of, beginning of the command and I'll say token equals, and then I'll put a dollar symbol and a bracket parenthesis and I'll also close the parenthesis. So this way, the value gets stored in the variable that's called as token. So if I try to echo token, I should be able to find the same data. So we have successfully stored the token inside a variable that's called token. Okay, now we need to edit the config file. We already have the config file. We saw what it has got inside. We need to put the details about the new user inside the config file. For that, we are gonna use the command. We can also edit the file directly. We can get into the file and copy and paste things. But to keep things easy and simple and to avoid any errors, copy paste errors, we're gonna use the kubectl config command. And we are gonna put this thing called as set credentials. And after that, we're gonna say the name of the user, the name of the user that we want, the second user. So we can call it like, uh, maybe we can call it as admin because the first user is Kubernetes-admin. So we are gonna call this user just admin, okay? 
And after that, we're going to put, this is just a user defined name. The token is important, not the user. Okay. And now comes the token. So for this variable, for the flag token, we are going to call the variable token. So which we, because we know that all the data is inside the token variable, we are going to call the variable here. Token is equal to token. That's it. So user admin has been set. A new user has been added to cube config. So if we have to see if there is any change in cube config, we'd use cube curl config view. And we see that a new user has been added. So user name is here and the user's token is here. So the token has got copied inside. Okay, so now we have added the user and we have also added the token for the user. And what else is required now? So we now have to add a context. We already have one context which maps the user Kubernetes admin. So this is the user and it maps this user with this cluster the cluster's name is Kubernetes. Now in order for us to use this user, the new user, we need to create one more context and we have to say which user and which cluster. And we also need to give a name for the context. Yes, so we'll have to do like that. So in order for us to add a new context, the command is going to be similar like, like what we gave before. We're gonna use kubectl config, and this time we're going to set the context. So we'll have to use set context and then name the context. Maybe you can put something like this, new context. And after that, you're going to say which cluster and which user. Cluster, we only have a single cluster here. We don't have multiple clusters and we know the name of the cluster. Again, this is something user defined. So Kubernetes. But this is kind of, this, this cluster name was given by KubeADM itself when the cluster was launched. If you have to bootstrap your cluster yourself, you can always choose a new name for your cluster. So you have specified the name of the cluster here by using the cluster flag, and then you're going to say which user it is. The user is nothing but the new user that you wanted to map to this cluster. So the user is admin, because you named it just admin. So user is given, cluster is given, and the context is going to be set now. All right, let's see if this context has got added. Kubectl, config view again, and look at the context section. So the context, you see that, you know, there is a new context. So this is the new context that we have added. We could also edit the file as I said before, but this is, a, this is an easier way of doing it through kubectl, an imperative way of doing it rather than editing the files, okay? So you have added the context also. The context is added, the user is also added, and the token for the user is also added. So things are ready. Now we need to just switch the context. The current context is this. The current context is actually Kubernetes admin at Kubernetes. So this is just the name. So we need to switch the context to this one, which is just, which is this one, right? Uh, the one we created right now, which is new hyphen context. So we have to now switch the context so that we can issue commands. We can operate Kubernetes using the new user. So the command to switch the context is this, kubectl config use context. So we are gonna use the new context and the name of the context is new context, simple. That's it. So if you look at cube config again, and if you wanted to just grip the word current context, you should be seeing the new one there. So this is the context, new context. And you can also see it using a handy command, kubectl config current context. So this command can also be used. So you get new context. So you know that the context now is new context. So it is good to name the context like you know it. Like, you know, you can always use names like this, how they have named it. They have named it like user in the form user at cluster. So that tells you that which is the user and which is the cluster that you have scoped to right now. So you can always give meaningful names, but that does not have real significance is what I wanted to tell you. You can put any name you want, but always put user useful names so that by looking at the context itself, you know that 
which user is logged into which cluster right now. Okay, I mean, the credentials that kubectl is using right now. So the context is switched. Now you're gonna issue all the commands using the new user. Let's try our first command. Let's try to view the cluster info. You're able to see the cluster information. And if you wanted to create, uh, let's say a new namespace, let's say call this NS test, it's getting created. If you wanted to check the list of namespaces, yeah, it's there. So like this, you can create a new user based on tokens, based on uh, signed bearer tokens. And an easier way of creating tokens is using service accounts. Service account creates a secret for you. The secret in turn, in turn creates a token for you. The token, you'll have to source the token and keep the token inside your cube config, map it with a username and create a new context map the user with a cluster and then switch the context to use the new user and start operating kubectl so hope this video was useful and we thank you for watching it